Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, the Orange Line. My name is Dr. PhD, otherwise known as Pat Haley. Joining me once again uh, is my my good friend, my family member, and uh, Flyers <laughs> expert, um, Nigel. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm all right. I um, I'm I'm doing actually pretty well uh, considering the the Flyers' past three games. Uh, I don't know about you or uh, the rest of the fan base, but I'm feeling pretty positive about everything. Yeah, I mean, you go, you go, you know, two wins in the last three games. That that OT loss against San Jose is a tough one to swallow, but I feel like it was something that the Flyers had to do with this West Coast road trip against some teams that were, were struggling. Uh, absolutely, and uh, on this West Coast uh, road trip, we went up against the Ducks, the Kings, and Sharks, all respectively. Um, walking away with five points out of those three games, which realistically looks kind of good. Um, and so let's just let's start things off talking about that first game against the 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 Anaheim Ducks. Is it the Los Angeles Ducks of Anaheim, like the Angels? No, no, it's it's just the Anaheim Ducks. That's stupid. It should be the L.A. Ducks of Anaheim. So that's how I'm going to refer to them uh, for the rest of this podcast. But the Flyers went up against the L.A. Ducks of Anaheim, uh, beating them 3-2. to two. Um, And uh, I think this was a really good way to start off the, the road trip. Yeah, it, it wasn't too bad. I mean, they, they came out pretty strong, you know. You know, take, took, took the early lead. I mean, one of the rare times that they actually took a lead into the second period, you know, coming out of the first. I mean, it was it was a pretty early goal, a uh, power play goal. That was another good thing to get this week, as, as last week the power play really struggled. And uh, that, that new look on, on that first power play was, was really interesting for that game. Well, that, I think it's interesting, but it's a good shift that this team needed to take considering that we've been struggling on the special teams. Um, and so sometimes switching things up, even though uh, I felt that our top power play line uh, is pretty good, but it, sometimes you just need to shake things up and get a new set of chemistries going on the team. So this this new power play, it's looking funky, but it's looking a little crisp right now. Like you said, they came out and, uh, and scored in that first shift. You said, they're the first power play, yeah. Yeah, um, which is great if if you're looking at it, you know. Um, it seems like Ryan Miller seemed to have a good game in net for the uh, Ducks, which uh, actually makes that win seem a little bit better for us, no? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I thought pretty much throughout the whole game uh, he played pretty well. I mean, the the bi- the big thing for me which is something that I've had a gripe with this team that pretty much since I've started watching them, is that um, they seem to take, at least under Haxtell, they seem to take a lead into third, and then they stop playing offense, which I think was really evident in the Anaheim game. It, you, you, you let this team kind of bear on you, you know, the final period, until you actually give up the tying goal. In the in the third, with with three minutes left, uh, the only thing that kind of saved that was that Patrick came, or yeah, Patrick came back down, uh, received the feed from uh, Lindblom behind the net, and then was able to put it back by uh, Miller for the game winner. Absolutely, and uh, it it was great to see Patrick get that go ahead goal that ended up winning the game. But it's also great to see that some of uh, the, the bigger pieces for the Flyers were able to get points. Sean Couturier ended up having a goal uh, along with Provorov. Claude Giroux had two assists. So it's it's good to see some of our bigger pieces uh, end up getting onto the board. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up Couturier. I mean, I feel like he's had a really slow start to the, the year. I mean, five points. I, I don't feel watching him that he's played particularly bad. He's just, you know, been unable to, to put the puck in the net or, or help put it in the net the way that a, a first line center should should be doing yeah it's it's a bit weird to see him play considering the season that he's coming off of 
where he it seemed like him and Giroux were were almost unstoppable last season. Um, and the, this slow start is not necessarily hurting him, but uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see at what point he starts to shift into gear. Um, because we, we know he has the capability of scoring, which obviously he does um, with, within this Ducks game. Yeah, the interesting part is that, that Giroux hasn't been slow in scoring at all, too. And, and in all cases that, that Giroux is on the ice, um, Kateri is pretty much out there with him. I mean, they both played the first line together. They both played the first um, power play unit together. So you, you would think that, you know, the points would kind of coincide with each other. Uh, maybe slightly less for Kateri, but, but something where you would be able to, to kind of see their point totals relate. Yeah, and you have to hope that uh, going further into the season, they start to click a little bit more. Um, and maybe, just maybe, this game against the LA Ducks of Anaheim uh, is the start of that. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it sure seemed to, to be the way you want it to start out this West Coast trip. Um, and, you know, I, I noticed some things, you know, with, with kind of the scheme that the Flyers are trying to play. Uh, it seemed like the bulk of their shots were coming from, from the slot area, you know, not really taking those those point shots that, you know, the Hackstall system has been known for, where, you know, you, you try and get the puck back to the point and then just kind of fire from there and hope you get tips. Uh, it, it really did seem like like a bulk of the shots um, came from the slot area, and, and it showed with, with you know, where, where their goals were scored as well. Well, I'm glad that you bring up the 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 fact that within hack system, this is you know getting shots from the slot is a little bit different because going into this, like we said last uh, podcast, is that we were kind of thinking that hack might be getting a, a few looks from people on the outside, um, and so this game uh, must have been a big indicator for that both on our side just looking at it as fans and on uh, probably his side. If he is actually getting looked at, maybe he thought um, a bit of a change is needed. And something obviously happened there. They were able to pull off the win against the Ducks, starting off this road trip really well, which continued into the next game against the Kings. Yeah, the the Flyers had a really strong game against the Kings. I mean... Just, just a 5-2 win. Uh, I mean, the Kings were, were really bleeding at that point, and it, it shows with the way that you know they fired their their head coach at the end of the week. But they, they go into L.A., and you know it, it seemed like they really had a, a, a good game from start to finish. Which is really endearing for us as fans to see, um, because sometimes it seems like these guys don't really want to play, especially like you said, into the third if they have a lead. It uh, it ends up being frustrating hockey. Um, but it seemed like things were a little bit different this time. Uh, Oscar Lindblom gets on the board, uh, and uh, him and Patrick, by the way, have just been pretty on fire for the past three games. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think this whole West, West Coast trip for both of them um, has been pretty good. Um, I believe that they each scored in, in each of the three games. Uh, I don't know if Lindblom put up a point in the final. Uh, he, he, sorry, I have the wrong game up. Uh, he did, he did have a point in that final game. So so in all, all three games, um, you know, both, both of those guys uh, put up points. Um, and, and it was just really solid play that led to, to them getting these chances and putting the puck in the back of the net. Absolutely. Um, once again, you see Ivan Provorov picking up another goal. Uh, and like I said, Limblom had a goal. He also had an assist, which is, is another good thing to see, is that even though we had Giroux and Couturier picking up goals in the game prior, we're still able to see some of these young kids step in there and uh, show that they're able to put points onto the board and alleviate some of the scoring pressure that some of the uh, the the older players on our team, not older, but the, the veteran presence that we have on this team, it kind of alleviates that pressure. 
Yeah, I, I mean, they're they're on your second line for a reason. You you need that secondary scoring, especially in this league, to to try and supplement your offense. Um, Lindblom's goal was a little funky, just just the way on on that kind of broken play where he, he, he gets the kick in and the kick ends up going off the skate and then it ends up being a good goal. Yeah, that's uh that's one of those moments where as a Flyers fan you, you kinda hope that uh Toronto doesn't pull some funky stuff like we always think or seem like they do, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, it always seems like, you know, the refs are against you. Yeah. Um but the the Flyers were not without their struggles though. Um, special teams, once again, like it has been all season, uh, not really clicking. 0-1 on the power play, and, uh, 1-5 on the, the PK in terms of, uh, letting in a goal, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can blame, uh, the Flyers too much on the power play. I mean, like you said, only one chance. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a crapshoot right there if you're actually going to connect or not. But, uh, you know, two games in a row at this point through this trip that, 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 you know, they gave up a goal on the power play, and that's just been consistent throughout the year so far. Uh, they did have, you know, five chances, or the Kings did have five chances to, to score on the power play. However, uh, their power play goal was, was midway through the second. So it's, or not even midway, uh, yeah, midway through the second. So it, it's not like your team was worn down at that point from too many power play chances. Yeah, it's, it's just... At some point, you you, you got to hope that they, they can kind of buckle down and go, all right, at least this one game, we're not going to, uh, you know, let up any any power play goals for the other team, especially against a team that's had their struggles for uh, the past couple of weeks. Yeah, I think that was a really, really good part that came out of it, is that, that the Flyers did, I mean, it was really like a 4-2 win, but you get the empty net at the end, makes it 5-2. But, yeah. but you played a solid game throughout, you know, the, the, the bulk of the game. Uh, you even get two goals in the third, which, I mean, like I mentioned before, the Flyers going to the third period with a lead is usually just defensive hockey. Uh, the only thing that kind of changed from last week is that uh, through these two games, the Flyers are on the uh, wrong side of the faceoff victories, which hadn't been a really strong point uh, to this point. Strong point for the team to this point. Yeah, it's 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 kind of upsetting to to see them drop you know games where this is their strong suit. That's something that we hope they can kind of fix going into the game that's happening tonight. Uh I should mention that uh we're recording this on Monday prior to the the Coyote Arizona the the Arizona Coyotes game, sorry. Um but yeah, it's it kind of sucks to see them lose out two games in a row, but it's not anything overly upsetting, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, really, it's just a face-off game. Uh, the only thing where that hurts you is just possession numbers, which, I mean, you see them maybe take a slight dip this week, but um, the zone starts have been pretty consistent from from last week to, uh, to this week. Week. And and I think really you can chalk that up to to more defensive zone starts just because you're playing with the lead in the third. Absolutely, I think um, the 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 thing that really matters the most, uh, as it does in all sports, is who walks away with the W by the end of the game. So, winning faceoffs, as good as a statistic as that is, and as helpful as it may be in the game. As long as the score remains four to two, five to two, uh, for the good guys, then I I can't really be too mad about them losing the face off game. No, and and it's it's something where where you you see as the process of, of this game too. I mean, they, they, they played a pretty complete game, uh, minus the face off thing, which is just a, a, a point in the possession numbers. Uh, again, for this game, you, you kind of see that, that, that shot location. Um, for the Flyers, you know, more in the slot, it, it seems like really two games into this, this West Coast trip, they, they really tried to make an emphasis of uh, getting the puck into the slot and get getting those, those uh, high-danger chances. Uh, and even defensively, it seemed like they kept the, uh, the Kings pretty much to the perimeter for their shooting. 
Absolutely. And I think that's one thing that could have made the difference in uh, the, the third game in this road trip against the San Jose Sharks is that they ended up having a lot more shots coming from the, the point um, than, than the previous two. Yeah, that, that third game was, was a rough one. Um, they, they took a, a, a lead in the third period, you know, up, up 3-2. Um, and then it kind of seemed like, like the Sharks kind of kept coming, kept coming and, and, like I said, played that defensive hockey in the third where you're trying to just hold a lead instead of trying to build it. And it finally breaks with five minutes left in the, in the third where, where Joe Thornton shows on, shoots on the uh, – on the, the right side of the ice and just beats, uh, um, what's his name, Picard, up high. And that's what I think is a little bit upsetting about this team is that they seem pretty content going into the third period with a one-goal lead, um, only because that's, that's one goal. That's a very surmountable number. And if you're going into it like, oh, we have, we have to keep this one-goal lead, we can't let them score anymore... It's it's kind of setting yourself up for failure, uh, which sure. No, oh, I'm sorry. Go on. Well, I was gonna say which ultimately ended up happening in this game, um, and for me, it's frustrating to see that because my my mentality is go for the kill. Absolutely, just never stop scoring. Sure, and I think that's been a frustrating part since hack has been uh, been behind the bench, but. To, to the Flyers' credit, uh, to this point, taking leads into the third, they've been undefeated. And, I mean, it's just really the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean, you you can only successfully defend the third period so many times. And, and at this point, you know, it was the time where you just break down defensively and Joe Thornton just has a pretty good shot coming off the right side. Yeah, it's... Or the left side, depending on which way you're coming in. He came in the left side, it was on the right side. So. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. Um, it's, it's a little frustrating to also see how quick it was into the overtime period. Um, because you, you kind of hate to see that kind of stuff happen. But I think that's also a bit of the nature of 3-on-3, three three, is that you, you just end up getting those quick goals in overtime. Yeah, I mean, it was it was somewhat of a broken play. Uh, Voracek just loses the, the puck along the boards, and then it's a two on one going the other way. And I mean, Mirne Meyer Meyer made no uh, no mistake about it and just beat uh, Picard to the the right side. And Picard for for the whole game up to that point seemed to be playing pretty well. Yeah, I think Picard played a pretty strong game. Uh, you could probably you know, put his play on on really that the reasons that they they walked away from San Jose with a point, which is which is a good thing, only in the sense that the previous two games Elliot played got the win for us. Well, I won't say that he got the win for us, but you know you you can't win without a, a solid goaltender, um, and Picard coming in and playing and letting the Flyers earn that point, um, unfortunately not giving us two of them, uh, is, is still a, a good thing to see, only because it, it kind of gives us more faith looking at it. Yeah, you know, it, it's good that Picard can come in and, and get the uh, get the win, but he's going to get a much much heavier workload coming up Yeah, with, uh, with Elliot out in line backing him up. Yeah, things are uh, are a little weird, iffy, I should say, uh, in in the goaltender position. But I want to keep things with this San Jose game. Uh, looking at special teams once again, over on the power play, over three, um, which is not necessarily a a, a stat that I want to see. And they let up a goal on uh, the the penalty kill, um, giving them a sixty six percent, which kind of seems on par for them. At least one goal on the on the penalty kill. Yeah, for 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 all three games. I mean, it's it's been something that they've been struggling with for really the past three seasons that that I can 
call is, is PK has been a very a very weak point of their game, and for this week it, it continued to show. They went they went a uh, sorry I have the number here. They they went eight eight kills for on on eleven chances, and that's that's twenty second in the league over the past week. Um, just pretty pretty weak numbers from the PK again. Yeah, and it's we've said it before. I'll continue to say it until something changes. It's just annoying. It's annoying to watch. It's annoying to continue to talk about. But the the penalty kill is, you know, our Achilles heel. That's that's the one place that it seems like is always going to bite the Flyers in the butt. Um, yeah, and I think I, I, I think the real frustrating part is that it, it's not just that the the PK is just getting unlucky. Uh, it just seems that a lot of the time the chances that do end up in the back of the net are wide open chances where it's just like in the San Jose, in, in the San Jose game, um, you get Pavelski on the left side who gets uh, a cross crease pass uncontested and has the whole net to shoot at. And, and rightly so he puts it away. So, so that's just something where it's like, you have to have better management of who's covering who and, and know that there's a guy back door and to have those lanes climbed up. And it's, it's, I, I don't, I don't know what else to say that hasn't already been said. There's, there's problems galore with, with this special team. And I think that it's something that could end up, you know, being a, a pretty big game changer. I mean, the Flyers don't give up that penalty. Uh, they, or even they don't let up that goal that ends up making the game three, two, we walk away with two points. Um, so it's, it's something that could potentially just be the, the, the crux for us. At least though, on the opposite side of things, Patrick gets another point. Uh, I, I believe that puts him at five points in, in these three games, four points in these, in these three games, but Lindblom, uh, also ends up taking five points, which... Like I said, uh, talking about the the Kings game, these young kids are really starting to come into their own. Um, yeah, I, I know what you mean. That the the young kids line, if you want to call it that, the one with Lindblom, Patrick, and Voracek has has looked really solid over the past few games. And uh, you were right in saying five points in the past three games. He had a. A goal and an assist the first game, two assists the second game, and then a goal this this uh, final game. Which you know, like like I said before, is is great because it takes some of the scoring pressure off of uh, those those star players and those probably highly looked at players when when other teams see who's out there on the ice. Um, yeah. Well- when you can get second pairing uh, guys and then have the ability to put numbers up against them, uh, you're usually going to have success as a, as a hockey team, rather than if all your scoring is coming from just just one line. And I think this is this is a good improvement, at least from last season. Even though we're, you know, not where I believe we were last season at this point, but it, it's a good improvement to see that. It's not just the top line that's scoring. It's there's more depth going throughout the the Flyers' offense. Yeah, but but you'd still like it to be more than just the top two lines. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned last week, losing losing JVR is is really really a damper on on that, that third line depth. Uh, so right now, uh, though we're getting the the top two lines uh, scoring, uh, we'd like to see a little more just from from the uh, the third line and if not just some some depth scoring from the fourth absolutely i love that you bring up um jvr though only because before we we sat down and pressed record for this podcast i was taking a look at the lineup and i mentioned something to you that seemed a little bit weird now we we don't know if any of this is confirmed or if this is true or if my eyes are just deceiving me but on the flyers website the right now the only two people that i see are on the injury reserve for the flyers 
are Michael Raffle and Michael Norworth, um, which is getting my hopes up that hopefully JVR is coming back soon. I won't say tonight. I won't say any time in the future. But hopefully it's closer than uh, than I originally thought. Well, yeah, I mean, the injury happened four, four weeks ago uh, when, it, when, you know, it was, it was the second game of the season. But, uh, yeah, th- this is coming up on the five weeks. I, I don't necessarily know the process of, of the injury reserves. Um, it would also be good to note that, you know, Elliot isn't on that list either that, that you mentioned, and we do know that he is out for this game. Yeah, I, I saw um, going through some of uh, the, the Twitter news that he is not going to be playing. He's going to be sitting and uh, getting looked at by the doctors once they get back to Philly. So uh, hopefully speedy recovery for Elliot. He played well in the first two games of this Western road trip. But things are looking all right with Picard at the helm. I mean, he he was able to get us a point in the San Jose game, had a heartbreaker in overtime. Um, but I'm feeling all right. Yeah, he, he, he did have a strong game like we talked about. And and if if the team can play the way that they played the past couple games in, in Arizona, who's been red hot, I, th- I think we'd be able to come away with with a point or, or, or two. I mean, I, I really think that's the goal. Uh, try, and, try and spoil the, the Coyotes' win streak here at five games. Um, but but how, how did you feel about that, that OT loss, I guess? Just from a, a fan perspective, did, did, did that leave a sour taste in your mouth? If I'm going to give my honest opinion, I'm going to say that I'm all right with it. It's It sucks to have a blown lead like that, and it sucks to see a goaltender play well and a team play pretty well going through the game and then only walk away with one point. But at the same time, this is a team that has been disappointing, giving up terrible losses, and walking away with no points. And this was a big road trip, like we said in the last podcast, and we needed something to develop. So walking away with five points is stellar, and that's the only thing I'm looking at. I, I understand that it's the, it's the you know most previous game, and it you know, could end up having effects on the players or um, any kind of lasting issues. But as a whole, five points, three games on the West Coast, I'll take that and a bag of chips. Yeah, we, we mentioned that last week, that you pretty much had to come out of this, this road trip with, with at least four points. And right now the Flyers have done it so far. If, if they can get the win tonight, that'd be seven out of eight. And that, that'd be a great a great way to try and try and re-jump start this, uh, this season. Absolutely. Um, but, I, you know, you asked me for my opinion, so it's going to be a turnaround time. What was your opinion? Yeah, I, I mean, I, th- I think it really just goes back to, to dropping the lead in the third period, and then, you, you know, you, you play defense, 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 and then, you know, five minutes left, and all of a sudden you have to try and win the game again. Uh, you get the extra point in in OT, you, you make it there, but, but just that sequence in, in OT was, was terrible. It, it really was. I, th- I think that's the part that's frustrating is, is the fact that you had the lead, you didn't trail at all in this game. Uh, really, you didn't even trail at all on this West Coast trip at all. Uh, the, the Flyers haven't. But but you, you finally are tied, you go back into OT, and then, then it's just a play where, where it's kind of broken, but, but the Sharks player comes, comes down the, the left wing and then it's it's a it's a two on one where where the the goalie is pretty much hung out to dry. So so that kind of stings stings a bit. The the fact that you play with the lead most of the game and then you know you still come away with the loss. Absolutely, I I I can understand where you're coming from for that. But looking at the past week as a whole, are you feeling positive? Um, I, I think I'm, I'm positive on the fact that it seems like the Flyers really tried to 
change their scheme and, and go away from the point shots that, that Hack likes to play and really try and focus on getting those shots from the high slot area. Um, you you kind of see them go away from that slightly and get some more point shots in the San Jose game, but I feel like as a whole, there was really an emphasis to try and get those, those high dangerous or high danger zone scoring opportunities. I can agree to that, and we're, we're able to see that throughout the last week they were able to outshoot their opponents only marginally by five shots, um, 92 to 87, but it's it's good to see them shooting more. Yeah, uh, it, it, well, I, I don't even know if they're, they're shooting more. It seems like cause the, the, the shot stat is only shots that either get in the net or, or are saved by the goalie. I, th- I think the real point there is that it's good to see that they're getting pucks to the net more than, let's say, when they had last week where you're just firing a ton of shots from the point, but they're actually not making it on net. Right. But regardless, I think it's it's good to see them kind of on the upswing. Hopefully this is a good trend for how the Flyers could perform going into the rest of November. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, the past week, their, their course was slightly down, which is just, you know, the number of shot attempts per game. So they, they were actually at, at a negative clip. Uh, in, in Corsi, they were uh, 49% of the total shots of, their, of the game was theirs. Um, and I, I think that's just an adjustment from having the lead most of the game. So it's it's in your, you're, you're playing that defensive style. You know, the other team's kind of coming at you. And maybe it's also a, a fact that you're, you're trying to work the puck a little more and get into those, those better scoring chances. Um, as for uh, unblocked shots, where, which are pucks that actually get through traffic, to either the net or, or missing the net, uh, they're they're actually still on the positive side of things. So so they're at they're at fifty two and and a half percent there, where it's like you're you're still getting your, your pucks through traffic more than the team that you're playing is getting pucks through traffic. And looking at that when you're actually heading games, that that's still a good stat to see that you know the other team's kind of bearing down you at the end of the game and probably taking more more shot attempts, but. As a whole, in the whole game, you were still able to get more pucks through traffic into the net. Well, I also think it's kind of interesting to see that we're able to get that through, you know, some of their bodies uh, more often, uh, especially considering the fact that we didn't trail in any of the games. We lost the the game against the 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 Sharks in overtime, so we never trailed against them. Um, so that means that they're going to have to rebuttal against us a whole lot more. And seeing the fact that we were able to get more things through is good. I, I don't know what else to say to that. Yeah, I, I think that's a credit to the defense where, where you know, even though I'm, I'm not a fan of playing defensive hockey heavily when, you, when you're only up a goal in the third, um, they were still able to, to block the shots out high and, you know, try and, try and relieve... The, uh, the shots that are getting to Picard and, and Elliot this week. Um, and, and I think it really comes down to a fact why they have more block shots is because, you're, you're, again, you're shooting from a, a better scoring chance. When you're taking shots from the slot area, you know, there's only so many people that can be between you and the net versus if you're taking shots from the point, which can definitely get blocked out high. Absolutely. Well, I think we're at about the... The time limit that I usually reach for. Um, and we did have some news that we want to talk about. So do you want to talk about that real quick? Just something uh, maybe that you're looking at uh, specifically. Um, I, I, I think it's it's more one thing is that, that Neuwirth Neu- is out again. Which has kind of been... The, the story of his career, or at least his career with the Flyers, is that it's just been consistent you know, injury after injury after injury. Uh, looking forward, I guess, even past this season, you, you can't see them bring Neuvirth back for, for uh, another stint, can you? No, it's just, I, w- I was going to say, when I saw that he was out, I was like, yeah, that just makes sense. Because he, he never seems to stay healthy for long. He, he was back for 
like a week this time. It yeah, it, like it seems like he's Mr. Glass from Unbreakable. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's uh he's that he's that one guy from SpongeBob who had glass bones and and skin made out of paper. He's just hurt all the time. <laughs> yeah, and and I th- I, th- I think the thing about I guess the the goalie injuries that that bothers me is that yeah yeah sure you brought in Picard which honestly nobody thought he'd be playing in the NHL this much this season. But you always get those fans that are like, oh, when's Hart coming up? Why are we bringing up Hart? Where's Hart? But here's the thing you have to realize. Like, the, the kid just went from the CHL to the AHL minor league hockey. And he's kind of, you know, adjusting to that level. Everyone's, you know, crying, like, bring up Hart. But nobody's really taking the time to look at, okay, maybe this kid has, you know, some things to learn in the AHL before then, you know, maybe you start to get him to the groove towards the end of the season or maybe not even the season at all to where, you know, Hart's actually ready to be brought up to this team. Yeah. And I, I think one of the other parts that makes looking at Hart not necessarily a viable option is the fact that he, he would be coming into a team where the, the defense hasn't been firing on all cylinders and for a young kid who we know has a lot of talent and so much potential, you you don't want to kind of burst his bubble by putting him with a defense that is gonna end up leaving him, you know, out to dry like like they've done with so many of our other goalies. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. If if this was more or less a team like Nashville where where you have this great defense, you're, you're probably a little more comfortable putting a younger kid in there where it's like, all right, the the, the shot opportunities that the other team's going to get are probably a little weaker than your average team. So it's like as long as your your defense can suppress a lot of the shots, your, your, your goalie is probably making some easier saves and more comfortable saves for, for a young goaltender. Yeah, so I think... For, for the people that are, are saying that they're looking for Hart, they don't understand why the Flyers aren't bringing up Hart, stop it. Stop stop talking about it. Stop asking why. It's not going to happen because we don't want it to happen. You know it, and I know it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'm a huge Hart fan too. I, I think the, the, the kid was great in, in juniors, but... Like, like I just said, it, it's not the right time to bring him up. It, Absolutely and not. Even, even though the Flyers have had a lot of goalie troubles, it's it's just not the right time to try and be thrusting him into the system. Well, goalie troubles aren't necessarily always the reason why we're losing, and that's something that some fans just don't necessarily seem to understand. But right now, what we have to look forward to is a game against the Arizona Coyotes. And then following up with that is another game against the Arizona Coyotes. Um, so hopefully we can, uh, we can, we can take this home at home series. I know it's not necessarily a home at home, but, uh, I, I hope we can walk away, um, with, uh, with maybe a point, maybe two points, Seven out of eight for this Western trip, uh, and come back home looking real strong. Give the give the fans something that they want to see because we got five home games coming up. Yeah, ho- hopefully it's it's a good game tonight. Um. So with that being said, I'm Doctor PhD, otherwise known as Pat Haley. You can follow me on Twitter at Doctor PhD D O C T E R P H D. Uh, this has been my guest, Nigel Haley. He didn't plug anything last time. But I still have nothing to plug. Still has nothing to plug. But he's a good guy. If you see him, give him a tip of the cap. Say hello. Uh, um, ask, ask him about something. I don't know. But uh, thank you very much for listening to The Orange Line. And uh, we will see you next week.